So, so <laughs> while many people are playing video games this morning, me and Professor got a very extreme workout in at Greasy Baja. Professor, anything to say why people need to be doing jiu-jitsu right now, the importance, the structure, why do you find it the most structured and most important art? I think it's, uh, it's statistically proven that 95% of fights end on the ground. And uh, if you're on the ground, you want to be able to protect yourself, whether you're a kid or an adult. And I think uh, one of the main things we do is focus on the ground. On top of that, still some stand-up positions as well. So I think it's super healthy. And it, it could, um, like, uh, uh, like he was saying, I don't know if he said it before, but it could save your life, man. Like if JB, uh, I mean, I know he's been doing other things, but if people didn't do something like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, any martial art really, but definitely, of course, I'm biased with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, it can help save your life. So, <laughs> you know, it's so important, especially if you have kids. Uh, if you have kids, no excuse why they're not in a class like this with an instructor like Professor Elias. But what a hard, hard workout today. You challenge yourself, you build structure, whether you're a child or an adult. And the times that we live in with so much violence, uh, this could really be an asset that so many people overlook, but it's one of the most important ones. And we see the amount of obesity out there and cancers, and just unhealthy lives and addictions. If you want structure in your life, uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, I don't think, I mean, I'm gonna tell you, um, it's getting me in the best shape of my life right now, and I did this years ago, and I've been back now for a while with Professor Elias, and just trying to get back up to speed. And uh, it is challenging, but I'll tell you, you walk around with a different kind of confidence, you see it in your body, you feel it in your soul. Uh, when you're really taking care of your body and you can take care of yourself physically. So think about that if you're an adult and you're capable of doing this. Maybe you're 90 and you're not, but if you have children, uh, if you're in decent shape, you want to get in really good shape, something you should be doing. Professor, anything you want to close with? This was an excruciating workout this morning. <laughs> you did a great job. Just, man, you, if, even if it's not here, us here at Gracie Baja Palm Desert, find your nearest Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu school and start training. I think you'll really uh, benefit from it and understand what JB's talking about. <laughs> no doubt. Again, I did this years ago. I've been doing this now for a while with the professor. And it, you know, just knowing how important it was back then and how important it is right now, uh, it's a life-changing experience. It's really a lifestyle. Would you say that lifestyle? For sure. Everything, everything will revolve. Your eating, your sleeping, everything that you do will revolve around trying to get a little better to make sure that when you come in and train, you feel good. Your you confidence level. Yeah. Also, way definitely. better. Way better. Uh, <laughs> it's going to give you much more confidence at work, in your personal life. Uh, just anything you do, you're going to have more confidence. So make sure you're training. It's Monday, October 10th, 2022. A very interesting day today. Markets somewhat flat. Dow Jones down about 93 points. NASDAQ down about 110 points. Gold, silver, Bitcoin, everything hammered. Uh, bond market was closed today for the holiday. I believe if the bond market was open today, we would have seen uh, probably more damage done to the stock market today. So tomorrow will be a very interesting day. But I printed out a couple articles I want to share with everybody. Feel free to comment down below. Uh, this first one coming from CNBC, this is serious. JP Morgan's Jamie Dimon warns US likely to tip into recession in six to nine months. This, is, uh, this really confuses me because I truly believe we are deep into a recession right now. Jamie Dimon thinks we won't get to a recession for six to nine months. Uh, he says he has growing concern of an economic recession as Fed raises rates. Said that the U.S. economy is actually doing well. Consumers are in better shape now than they were back during the global crisis of 2008. Uh, I could not disagree more with Jamie Dimon. And I think uh, we've got to stop listening uh, to these big banks, uh, people like Jamie Dimon. I, I think that they are not telling the truth. Uh, there's no way that he does not believe that the United States of America is that there's no way he can he can believe that we're not in a recession at this point. That the United States of America is not in a recession. He, there's just no way he believes that. Yet we have people 
uh, the head uh, of, of uh, J.P. Morgan Chase telling us that we're not in a recession right now and that we won't be in one for six to nine months. How many of you believe that? How many of you believe what Jamie Dimon is, is saying? How about this one? Also coming from CNBC, ARC's Kathy Wood issues open letter to the Fed saying it is risking an economic bus. Uh, ARC innovation year to date is down 62.5%. And I thought that everybody told us, don't fight the Fed. Just go along with it. The Fed is your friend. Uh, don't fight the Fed. Well, now the big players are beginning to want to fight the Fed because they don't like not having access to all the free money. Where were they when the Fed kept rates at 0% for over a decade. Where were they when all this helicopter money, all the quantitative easing, all the things that caused inflation were taking place? They didn't care then because they were making billions and billions of dollars. But now that uh, the Fed has reversed course and it is affecting something like ARK Innovation, it's affecting uh, start, uh, uh, stock uh, portfolios and performances, uh, the big players now, are getting very, very concerned about is the Fed going to pivot and why now the Fed must pivot because they're losing a lot, a lot of money. Here's another one coming from CNBC. Fed's Evans, Charles Evans says, fighting inflation is the top priority even if that means job losses. Prepare to lose your jobs, ladies and gentlemen, because we're going to see, I believe, millions of people in the next uh, year or two lose their jobs. And, and just think how they sacrificed the US economy for Wall Street, now your job is about to be sacrificed. Uh, I, I don't know how bad it will get, but I think right now, when you listen to what Charles Evans just says, they clearly are going to destroy the economy. Uh, they're clearly going to destroy the job market and your job could be next, and you need to be preparing for that. I, I would definitely have a, a, a plan to fall back on. Uh, if you have uh, uh, the ability to take on a side hustle right now, um, if you have a job right now, do everything you can in your power to keep that job. Be early, be productive, do the best job you, you possibly can do. Um, because the people that really don't care about their jobs, the people that don't wanna show up at the office, they're gonna be the first ones to go. And these people don't realize when the Fed doesn't come to the rescue, when the government doesn't come to the rescue and people begin to get very, very hungry, uh, they're getting evicted, they're losing their homes, the cars are being repossessed, uh, they're gonna realize why they should have done everything in their power to keep that job. It's gonna get very, very ugly, and we're going to see more people. The homeless rate is not going down, ladies and gentlemen. It is, it, it is going up. Why is that? Because you're gonna have people in suburbia, in suburban America, uh, people who once drove a nice car, BMW, they're going to be facing homelessness. This is gonna to happen to a lot of people who thought it could never happen to them. People now believing that something can't happen to them, uh, this is, this is a, a, a complete false sense. Don't fall into this. Anything is possible now and you need to take precautions. You, you need to have a backup plan so that this does not affect you. It's the people that don't have a cash reserve, don't have a backup plan, don't have the side hustle, that when they lose their job and they're living paycheck to paycheck, uh, they're in big trouble. How long are you gonna be able to stay in that apartment or that house? How long are you gonna keep that car before the repo man takes it? These people are on borrowed time, so don't let it happen to you. Here's another one from CNBC. GM and Ford shares fall after UBS downgrades on expectations for weakening demand. GM was down nearly 4% today, down 47% year to date. Ford down 6.89% today, down 47.8% year to date. I don't understand when you have the two biggest automakers on planet Earth down nearly 50% year to date, how we're not seeing more carnage uh, in these markets. I mean, these are astronomical numbers. And how long before we begin to see real big layoffs uh, in the auto sector? It's just a matter of time. And when you look at these videos uh, of the 40, 50, 60,000 
uh, Super Duties, the Ford Super Duties sitting out in Kentucky. It is just absolutely, uh, uh, it just, it, it's a sight that just, it puts you in awe. Uh, of seeing billions of dollars of vehicles just sitting and rotting away in parking lots. And are they still producing more vehicles when they don't even have chips for, for vehicles for last year? I mean, when do they just stop the assembly lines, the production lines, and send everybody home? And who in the world is going to buy all of these vehicles when at some point, if they ever get chips for them, we're gonna see a flood of vehicles uh, hit the market and at this point, who's going to be able to buy them when nobody's working, when people don't have any savings, when people are living paycheck to paycheck or credit card to credit card? Uh, we're going to see catastrophic, multiple catastrophic events uh, happen in this country without a doubt. Here's one from the hedge. Stocks and bonds off lows as Brainerd touts pivot. Uh, this was interesting today. Uh, earlier, Fed, Fed Brainerd. Uh, did get a little dovish and the Dow I believe was down about 270. It did reverse. I, I think it went between positive and negative, negative territory nearly 100 times today. She said the Fed is very aware that unexpected rate or currency moves could interact with financial vulner, uh, vulnerabilities, uh, feeding concerns around the state of current bond market liquidity. The market is looking for any, any good news it possibly can get. And you can interpret this message any way you want. But again, the Fed is looking for anything, anything uh, that it can pivot on, any type of hope. Bank of England, uh, uh, what Brainerd said today, which didn't really seem that, that big of a deal to me, but it's looking for anything. Here's another one from the hedge. Credit card rates just hit a record as the average car loan rises to fresh all-time highs. Now, the 30-year fixed rate mortgage today is hovering right around 7%. Average mortgage payment is up 50% from the beginning of the year. U.S. savings rate is at record lows. I think it's sitting right around 5%. Credit card debt soaring to record highs every month. Average credit card interest rate right now, the average interest rate on a credit card is sitting at 18.79%. This is why we're in big trouble. All, all the data I'm reading to you right now, people are getting deeper and deeper. They are drowning in debt. There is less opportunity out there. And inflation is not going away. Average new car loan is now sitting a little over $38,000. Uh, we are going to no doubt see an implosion of the US consumer coming very, very soon. And I pray to God that every one of you is preparing for this because this is gonna be absolutely historic, epic, and the people unprepared for this are going to pay the ultimate sacrifice. And what we're going to see come out of this socially is gonna be another monster. Um, we are really witnessing a economic Frankenstein right now, but what's going to come socially is going to be an economic Godzilla. And people have no idea um, how bad this can get. And this is why I, I, I repeat this on a daily basis to get out, get in better shape, get out to an MMA class, get out, do some jujitsu, get out, uh, you know, train, uh, work with tactics, you know, use those tools that you have uh, learn, learn the skills that you're going to need to protect yourself, ladies and gentlemen. And it doesn't matter, you know, if you live in a bad neighborhood or a good neighborhood, this is going to be something that affects people of all races, all genders, all backgrounds, all incomes. Everybody can be affected by this very, very quickly because this is, this is going, this economy is affecting everybody and the social fallout is going to be everywhere. So make sure you're getting in better physical shape. Learn skills, learn tactics, uh, you know, know how to use those tools, know how to use your body. This is why I love jujitsu. Uh, if you can take up some boxing, wrestling, whatever you can do, whatever you have access to do. Sitting on the couch and watching Netflix is going to be a very, very bad choice for your survival. Now is the time. We're running out of time, ladies and gentlemen. Time is not your friend. You don't know 
when this thing really begins to accelerate. And we are really watching, when you watch these markets, we were, that was nearly uh, 37 points, 37,000 points at the high. We're almost back in the 28s, we're 29.2. So this thing has a long way to go. Here's another one, Fed pivot is not an investment thesis. So ask yourself, if they did pivot, how is this gonna fix things? If we went back and we began to lower rates and print money, how is this gonna fix things? Because that's exactly what got us into this mess. This is exactly what caused inflation. So everybody believes that the Fed pivots, well, it's all gonna get fixed. Well, yeah, it's gonna give a sugar high to the markets, but it is not going to fix anything. Pivoting and printing money and lowering interest rates is exactly what got us into this mess. Uh, expanding the Fed balance sheet. Again, this is exactly what got us into this mess. And the only way we get out of it is aggressively raising rates, shrinking the balance sheet, and most of all, we must stop spending money. This, uh, this government must stop spending money. We have way too much money going out than coming in. But again, uh, that's probably not gonna happen. And we're gonna have big, big trouble here. Really, really big trouble. And another big problem I see is uh, the reason that these rate hikes are not having any effect is because inflation is not 8.3%, it's nearly 20%. You could argue even more, and that's why these rate hikes are having no effect because either they're too dumb or they're not being honest with us and admitting what the real inflation numbers are. And if you're sitting at 17, 18, 22% inflation, a 50, 75 basis point rate hike doing absolutely nothing. And the scary thing here is that inflation could go much higher. And if you believe that real inflation is 18 to 20% right now, what happens if it goes 25, 30%? Many want the easy money to come back. The Fed pivot means that the Ponzi scheme starts all over again. Stagflation is now the risk and a Fed pivot will do nothing to bring these markets higher. I think if the Fed pivots, it is gonna be game over. I, I think that this is when we begin to see real serious trouble in the economy. If you think it's bad now, once the Fed pivots, if they do, you're gonna see real serious trouble. And that's when you better make sure that you own gold and you own silver because the dollar is gonna be worthless. This is when hyperinflation comes, uh, comes in. And this is why I own gold, I own silver, I own dollars right now because uh, dollars buy things. But if we do see a pivot, and it is possible, it's not gonna happen this year, but let's just say it happened next year. I'm not, I'm not ruling it out, it could happen. If, it, if that happens, you're gonna see gold and silver go to the moon, kiss the dollar goodbye, hyperinflation is here, and your standard of living overnight is going to change immediately. And it's gonna be a very, very scary time because most people are not prepared to adjust to what is about to happen if they pivot. Most people don't have real assets. Most people have massive amounts of debt. They're living paycheck to paycheck. They're living on credit cards. You, you bring in hyper, look at just a little inflation is doing right now. What do you think hyperinflation would do to America? They would release this genie out of the bottle and they would never get it back. And this country would be in very, very big trouble. Peter Schiff, you'll need gold when the Fed loses this fight against inflation. Well, you know and I know that central banks are continuing to stockpile gold. Gold is money. Gold is probably the most liquid asset on planet Earth. Inflation is gonna run out of control, Peter Schiff says, and the Fed is powerless. There is nowhere to run at this point other than gold and silver. Back to simplicity, ladies and gentlemen, owning something real. And I'm not telling you to buy gold or silver. You can do whatever you wanna do. All I know is every month I buy it and I put it away and I don't think about it. And uh, I, I look at it as a life jacket. And when I'm on a boat, I never think about the boat crashing. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't give it two thoughts. But I do know and I am aware that there's life jackets on the boat. And in that one in a million chance that boat crashes, I know exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab that life jacket. 
And, and you know, it's just like car insurance. You don't think about driving every day. Oh, I'm going to get an accident today. Or when you leave the house, oh, I'm going to get an accident today. You don't think about it. But you have car insurance for a reason. And the minute you're in an accident, anybody out there who's been in, in an accident, the minute you've been in one, the first thing you think about is, thank God I have insurance. So have some insurance, but that's up to you. There's a lot of people that have no life jackets in their boat and a lot of people have no car insurance when they're out driving around and all it takes is one accident and it's over. How can the Fed win when they are not being honest with the real numbers? We know that inflation is not 8.3%. And we know that unemployment is probably not 3.5%. You know, the scary thing is the data that we're getting. How accurate is the data? How real is the data? And people are making life-altering decisions every day on this data. And that's really, really scary. Be very careful about the data that you're getting. Use your own two eyes, your own two ears. Take a look around with what's really happening. Listen to some of the data I'm sharing with you on a daily basis and think about, you know, who's right, who's wrong. And maybe the truth somewhere in the middle. But I think that we've been told a lot of lies. Uh, We were told that the economy was fine, that consumer was fine, inflation was transitory, uh, inflation, you know, Never going to get to three or four percent. Now here we are at eight point three percent, and that's a lie. We know it's twenty percent. Everything has been a lie. We're told that the consumer has never been stronger. Do you really believe this nonsense? Uh, here's another article, and I'm going to finish this with this one. Cyber attacks force over a dozen U.S. airport websites offline. Russian-speaking hackers claim responsibility. Websites of fourteen airports were temporarily brought offline by cyber attacks. O'Hara and LaGuardia were two of them. And those are big airports. I've been to O'Hare many, many times. It is enormous. When I read stuff like this, it, it just makes me think again, how safe is your money in a bank when it can just be cyber attacked, when you can be shut offline, when these apps can be shut down, when these websites can be shut down? It's very, very concerning, especially right now with the technology that is out there, everything that is happening geopolitically, the talk of war all over the world, and how easy it is for these cyber attacks to take place. And imagine the ones we haven't even heard about, but they're happening literally every day to banking institutions, to to government agencies, airports, uh, water treatment centers, hospitals, et cetera. It is only a matter of time before we begin to see large scale attacks uh, on our financial institutions, on the banking systems, uh, maybe Wall Street, what have you. You must have access to money, ladies and gentlemen. Do not leave it all in the bank. It is nothing more than digits on a screen. It can be shut down, it can be wiped out, uh, and you can have absolutely no access to your money. Think about the, this, this type of situation it would put you in uh, if you could not access your money. The lights go out, we have some sort of emergency, grid down, whatever, and it lasts two weeks. You have no money to go to the store. The, the systems won't work. The only thing they're gonna take at that point is cash. Uh, maybe you can go out there and barter with some silver. Maybe you can barter somebody with some gold. Uh, more than likely, you obviously could take your gold and silver, get it very liquid into cash. But at the end of the day, you're going to need a currency. Gold and silver it is very liquid. I, I don't think you would have any issue uh, getting cash for gold and silver. But if you don't have cash, there's no way you're going to go to the store and buy milk or groceries or go to the, uh, to the gas station and get gas without physical cash. The plastic cards, not going to work. A check, not going to work. ATM card, not going to work. Think about how vulnerable we are right now. Think about how fragile the system is. And all it takes is one bad day, and this whole thing could be down for weeks. So don't take that chance. I'm not telling you to pull all your money out of the bank. I do believe the more money you get out of the bank, the more money you get out of the system, the safer you will be. But that's a decision that you have to make. But think about worst case scenario, if if the systems go down and you can't access your accounts, what are you gonna do? Make sure 
you have access to cash. Put it somewhere safe, put it somewhere you can get to in a time of need. I'm gonna leave it there today. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe and make sure you hit that bell notification down below so that you are alerted with the newest video. I look forward to speaking with all of you very, very soon. God bless, have a great day.